Hello everybody. What we are going to be doing in this video is some benchmarking, specifically the latest version of Windows 10 versus the first beta version of Windows 11. Now this isn't going to be as in depth as these benchmark videos usually are because it is a beta version. I'm just trying to get a rough idea of the uh, direction of either improvement or uh, disimprovement with the development of Windows 11. Now, if you're looking for Linux benchmarking, I've done a couple different videos on that, and do make sure you are subscribed and you ring that bell, because when Windows 11 officially releases to the public, I'm gonna be doing a full in-depth benchmarking video of that versus both Arch Linux and Debian. And if you're interested in seeing how Windows 10 stacks up to both of those right now, you could click the I above to see that benchmarking video. With that said, let's go ahead and start off with the very basic boot speed test. Now I did upload a little YouTube short, just kind of experimenting with that, uh, doing the actual boot speed test that you're basically seeing right now. And ultimately it is very neck and neck, very close. Uh, Windows 10 does pull out a slight advantage to uh, Windows 11 by about two tenths of a second. So nothing significant and probably within the margin of error. I did disable the uh, login screen for this so you could actually see the time they got without too much interruption. And next we have our first and really only real world benchmarking test that we're gonna do in this video and that is the Adobe Premiere Pro render test. Uh, I made a little sample project that I was able to use on both operating systems, and it was actually pretty fun to make. I just threw together some really choppy effects, and I rendered out the same 1080p video as both an MOV and MP4 on both systems. Now again, kind of similar to the boot speed test, we can see that Windows 10 had a one second advantage rendering out the MP4, but almost a 15 second advantage over Windows 11 rendering out the MOV file. And especially with this MOV, the one thing I'm kind of concerned about is if this was like a 4K one hour long film that I was trying to render out, the uh, difference would probably been rather significant. So from here, I went ahead and fired up Cinebench, the benchmarking tool, and we tested both the single core and multi-core performance. The scores were fairly close, but if you actually look at the percent differences between the numbers, the uh, Windows 10 scored 1268, while Windows 11 scored 1171, it is an 8% difference. Which if you are using a piece of software that is limited to one core, you will probably notice a difference. Now the margin is not as big with the multi-core score, it cuts it in half to about a 4% difference, but that is still a difference worth noting. Next up, we fired up the good old Blender BMW render test. Now in Windows 10, this rendered out at three minutes and 11 seconds compared to three minutes and 35 seconds in Windows 11. And out of all of the tests we've ran, except for one more, uh, this had a very wide margin of about 12% difference between the uh, two times. And I will note here that I did run these tests in kind of different circumstances, whether it be right after one other, or after a cold boot and all the numbers are basically the same. So I didn't go and like cherry pick specific ones just to make one operating system look worse than the other. This is just what the results were. But moving on from there, we have the U-Engine Valley benchmark. This is one of my favorite benchmarks because out of all the U-Engine ones, it's the one that's uh, better to look at while you're uh, running these benchmarks. And out of anything here, this one had the uh, slimmest margin differences. Windows 10 did have a little bit of an advantage at about 1.7%, scoring 29.45 versus Windows 11 at 28.95. And we can see that the average frames per second in Windows 10 gives you about one FPS better, which at least with gaming is so close you probably couldn't tell. And I will note that game mode was enabled on both systems, so this is just out of the box, kind of the best performance you're gonna get. I ran this on high at 1440p. Um, I didn't really mention, this was obviously done on the same machine. I have these specifications down below. The graphics card was a eight gigabyte RX 580. Now, last but not least, we have Geekbench. Geekbench is personally one of my favorites because it, it's fairly accurate when it comes to overall rating and performance. And it does give you a more specific breakdown of specific categories, such as uh, floating point rendering and things like that. But first, taking a look at the general overall score, for our single core performance, this is definitely the widest margin. 
with Windows 10 scoring 1247 versus Windows 11 at 1075, giving us about a 14.8% difference in the scores. And then with multi-core performance, just like with Cinebench, it wasn't nearly as bad, but it, there's still a good margin here at 7.3%, with Windows 10 scoring 8342 and Windows 11 scoring 7755. So overall, it seems like Windows 11 is heading in the wrong direction. Uh, I did do these benchmarks, or at least most of these benchmarks, uh, when the very first developer release came out, but I decided not to do a video on it when the results were a lot closer, so it wasn't really worth talking about. But with how the scores have changed going from the developer release to this beta release, it's actually gotten a good amount worse. And I'll uh, put, up, put up the scores, I'm not really going to talk about them too much, but a couple months back, uh, sometime in June, I think, I ran these tests as both a fresh install with the leaked ISO that came out and as an upgrade with the very first developer version. And you can see there are differences, but the scores are definitely a lot closer than what we saw here today. So when this officially comes out, it is going to be interesting to compare some of these scores to what we have today, as well as comparing it to Linux. Do make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. That one is going to be... Uh, much more in depth and very fun to make. Again, if you're interested in any other benchmarking videos, I've done a lot of them. If you're interested in what Arch Linux distribution benchmarks the best, I have that video. If you're interested in what popular GNOME-based distribution, or not GNOME-based, but distro that runs GNOME uh, benchmarks the best, I have that video. A link to a playlist will be down below with all those benchmarking videos I've done so far. So with all of that said, I would like to thank my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Uh, we have a new producer. Welcome, Phil Mack. Uh, you are joining Michael Valentino as producer-level supporters on the show. And thank you to everybody else you see on the screen here for supporting me and my content. It means the world to me. And uh, if you want to join through YouTube, you'll get some extra things like emojis and stuff like that. But if you like to use Patreon, there'll be a link in the description to go ahead and support me on Patreon. Additionally, we have a Discord server that will be linked below if you're interested in joining the Tech Hut Discord server. And with all of that said, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.